Hello everybody, I'm Sarah and I'm a recorder player. So I found a pile of ancient CDs, recordings of my performances from long times past. I thought I'd listen to them with you and yeah, some of these are nearly 20 years old and who knows what's on here. I'm slightly worried they're going to be terrible and embarrassing, but I'm actually more worried that they're actually really good and that I'll realise that I've not improved at all in the past 15 years and that I hit my peak somewhere in my early 20s. Never mind! Shout out to today's sponsor, Philharmonic Loudspeakers. I'll be listening today on my beautiful handmade desktop speakers. More on that later. I wish I had recordings of me playing as a child, but I just don't. It's another era. I know that there is an older recording from my high school music exam, but to get a hold of that CD, I'd have to contact my shitty high school ex-boyfriend. And I really don't want to. <laughs> 2004, what have you got for me? Come on little CD player, reading, reading. <sighs> Can you hear this? It's taking so long, this is why we went digital. This is the only CD player I actually have, this ancient drive that's going <laughs> Conclusion, I think this CD is damaged. <laughs> Record a concert, 1st of March 2006. This was when I was a student at Birmingham Conservatoire. Okay, opening of the concert. <laughs> The Pavan Lacrimé by John Downland, one of the most beautiful consort pieces in the world. Um, yeah, it sounds really calm. It wasn't in tune. I think I was on the tenor line and I definitely heard 2006 Sarah Jeffrey playing some very high thirds. The thing is, with a recorder consort, if you don't get everything super in tune, it's really noticeable because it buzzes. Um, I still had a while to go. It was nice and flowing. Hmm. Here we go. This is a piece I performed for bass recorder and live electronics called Pipistrelli Gialli by Benjamin Thorne. This was the first ever piece I played with electronics. However, I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> Did you hear that? <laughs> My bass recorder playing was also not that clean. I'm cracking lots of notes. I still had to learn that there's a difference between interpreting music so that it sounds noisy and dirty and crackly as a choice and just leaving it that way because you think that it doesn't matter because it's contemporary music. When I was performing it, I remember that I did not listen to the electronics at all. <laughs> when you're playing with electronics, you're meant to listen, react. It's like another performer that enhances what you could do as an acoustic player. So I was just kind of doing whatever. On the whole, this concept from 15 years ago, not too terrible. Well done, baby Sarah. <laughs> God. In 2005, I applied for a scholarship to go on a music summer school and this was my application. I got the scholarship, by the way. Should we hear some Telemann?
okay, I'm going to stop there. Like many people, I find it intensely uncomfortable listening to myself playing. So if I'm making a facial expression, that's that's why. I'm really struggling not to tear myself apart. What did I like about it? I... I was putting emotion into it. I was feeling the music and I can hear that I was going for it. However, I can hear that I was really using my breath to shape the sound like a flute player would. I came to the recorder very late after learning flute for my whole childhood. So here at this point, I'm still playing like... It's probably not how you're meant to play flute either. And also my tone is very like nasal. I'm playing quite like... And now I play more like... Okay, a bit of fast movement. a whole passage and I still put that on a scholarship CD. Maybe they gave me the scholarship because they thought that I really needed the the, the lessons. Uh. Yeah, lots of mistakes, lots of messy fingers, but you know, hey, that's not a bad thing. I was learning. 2005, what a time to be alive. Let's see, Should we? Go? are we going in chronological order? 2007, this was when I got to Amsterdam. So this was me playing some medieval dances with uh, an Italian singer and percussionist that I met at a party. And I remember my critique after this concert, we got critique from the teachers. They said the only good thing about it was the singer. By the way, I haven't listened to this since 2007. Okay, I really have to learn how to relax when I'm listening to myself. I don't know why I chose to play this so high in the range of the recorder. And it sounds like it's difficult. I'm making it sound difficult. Why am I doing that? Skip, skip, skip. Um, yeah, in Dutch you say braaf, a bit goody goody. I think I was really struggling with, I know that at this time I was really, really, really worried about what my teachers thought of me. And I can hear that in my playing. I'm trying to be myself, but trying to please others at the same time. It's a normal part of being a student, finding your place as a musician, but I can hear that. Oh, Sarah, don't worry. <laughs> One day you'll be a YouTuber. <laughs> uh, what else we got? 2008, I was in an opera by Greek composer Tanya Sikalanu. The opera was Medea. Very uh, happy subject. I could not watch an opera about Medea now. Like after having a child, it would literally kill me. Uh, just try and skip through and find a bit with recorder. great. I can't hear the recorder at all. I was there playing the whole time. Recording. 
So I remember I was so excited and I remember that I spent the entirety of the rehearsals and concert looking at the conductor like this. You can't hear the recorder in the mix. That is something for composers. I think we've got like six singers, piano, harp, cello, with percussion and then recorder. Gotta make sure the recorder's mic'd up because I do not hear a thing. Well, that was fun. I have this Sarah Jeffrey promotional CD. Who I was planning to give this CD to? I don't know. I guess this is from like 2010. Okay, we've got some some different things. Let's listen to Jesty by Berio. This has always been one of my favorite pieces to play. to it back on a recording I'm reminded of how much I rely on the theatricality of the piece when performing (laughs) so listening to it doesn't give the full picture I think if I make a recording of this again I have to concentrate more on how it sounds a bit more rest maybe a bit more space it's hectic and frantic I can date my time I was very comfortable with this piece. Let's listen to something I was not so comfortable with. French Baroque music. give a performance and you think that it was really bad and then a long time later you listen back to it and you're like actually that was fine okay if we're gonna be picky is this the pinnacle of french baroque interpretation no uh i definitely needed to get more into the style and not and again not use my air to push the notes so much keep it think of these horizontal lines rather than Again, this was an example of me performing something that I felt so insecure about. I did not know if what I was doing was the right thing. I think that's why I often fled into contemporary music. I really felt like, if it's new, no one can tell you you're doing it wrong. I felt uncomfortable not knowing what I was doing. I felt uncomfortable making mistakes. And I didn't yet realise that that is such a necessary part of learning. Those are definitely things that I've learned over the years as a professional musician. So, you know, you don't have to have it all figured out in your student times. So this is meant to be like a light-hearted react video. I'm getting, okay. I'm... So let's listen to one more thing. Next up, we have a student concert from 2012. What I'm playing here, I don't know. Oh, it's video. It's me playing Sin Descanso by Roderick de Man that I later played in my master recital. Have a listen to this, shall we? (laughs) I'm so serious. Okay, I'm just gonna pause it here. Whew, shit, I played that, yeah. (laughs) So a lot of work went into this piece. Oh my, okay, there's this whole tenor section.
Do I feel threatened by my former self? I could not pick this piece up and just play it today. I would again need to put some weeks or maybe even some months of work in to get it up to this standard. The only thing I would change about this performance is that I'm so serious. I mean, this music was my, was everything to me. And I was so wrapped up in my exam and my study. I feel in the years since I've graduated, I've just had a bit more of real life and perspective and I can have fun with this kind of music as well. I think a lot of people find that they have much less time to practice after graduation. Work, I've got a family, a lot of responsibilities. And the days of being a student where I'm in a practice room all the time are long gone. So I think I always, I'm gonna get real with you. I think I always worried that my technique had gotten worse, but I don't think it has, it's just different. I remember preparing for this recital and being so focused on this, fast and accurate fingers playing all the notes. But of course, music's about so much more than that. I was very serious and I was very worried. Now I definitely play music that I love. So I just feel like my world is a bit bigger now. And you know, your music develops in so many other ways than virtuosic fast notes. Of course, it's always good to have the, the adequate tools to express what you want to musically. That's why technique's important. Uh, but back then that was the only thing I was focused on. Now I feel much more peace and confidence when I play. That's really nice. Uh, don't get me wrong, I'm still definitely hearing a lot of things that I still do. I still have the tendency to be pushy with my breath and make it go a bit out of tune. I still have the tendency to rush and not take space in my playing. I still have the tendency to get way too serious and focused, lose sight of the bigger picture. Hmm. <laughs> Music is a lifelong journey. Music is a lifelong journey. Now, let me take a minute to talk about Philharmonic Loudspeakers, the sponsors of today's video. I have the DT1 desktop speakers. They're handcrafted in marble and stainless steel with no plastic. And the sound quality is of course the most important. They have a corrective network and high end gold plated binding posts to give the best sound. Audio files, you can find full technical specifications on the website. I've been so impressed with them. They have been perfect for all these finer details of classical music that I like to work with. Aside from my smaller desktop models, there are larger versions available as well. The concertina has a small size yet large sound in wood or marble. The Celesta is a large three-way compact loudspeaker with fine bass reflex tuning. And the Angelica, for those of you who like the bass, is a tall loudspeaker designed to reproduce frequencies of 30 hertz and lower. So these are not your budget speakers, but rather your high quality handcrafted investments like investing in a musical instrument. They're handmade in Germany by Clemens Bartel and I'll put the links and info in the description. Enjoy. As always, you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on my face down here. If you'd like to support Team Recorder, here's our Patreon and up here's another video. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye.